Hey everybody, James here, and I'm back with a brand new edition of Music Biz News. First up this week, move over Taylor Swift and BTS, there's a new superstar on the street. Sony Music India is claiming that their artist Batcha has struck internet gold with his video for the song Poggle. According to the label, in the first 24 hours of release, Poggle earned over 75 million views on YouTube, which places it 1 million views above the BTS single, Boy With Love, and over 10 million views above the Taylor Swift single, Me. But there's a catch. YouTube has not yet recognized Badge's success with the single Poggle. Many believe that this is due to his use of Google AdWords. Instead of promoting through his fans and relying on label promotion, Badge had decided to buy a bunch of Google AdWords that all pointed to his video release. There's nothing wrong with this, and it's certainly not illegal, but it is an unusual marketing tactic that have led many to claim that some of the views may be considered fake because not everyone knew that they were about to see a music video. YouTube, again, has remained silent on this matter, but Badcha and his label, Sony India, are standing by the decision. Next up this week, Google really wants a social network. After the failure of Google Buzz and Google Plus, not to mention their messaging app Google Wave, the company is back in the headlines once again with the launch of something new called Shoelace. Shoelace is a hyper-local social network. It's based around activities and the things that you're interested in doing and building communities around shared interests. The entire thing revolves around something called loops. Loops are basically events that are taking place in your area that you are interested in participating in. And there are also categories of events. People opt in to being notified of messages related to certain types of events, and an algorithm learns your preferences. Once that happens, the algorithm then begins suggesting new events to you to hopefully push you off your phone and out into the real world. How this will interact with the music industry seems pretty obvious. Bands will be able to upload their gigs, and when people show an interest in a certain genre of music or a certain artist, Google will then begin inviting them to other events featuring those artists or featuring those genres in their area. This could help build local music scenes, but with Google's history of not having great social networks, it remains to be seen whether or not people will adapt this new technology. Heading over to the live entertainment side of the music business, Dead & Company are currently reigning as the kings of summer. A new box office report shows that Dead & Company's latest tour has grossed nearly $30 million from just 12 shows in summer of 2019. The second place position, which goes to Shawn Mendes, has grossed $13 million from roughly the same amount of shows. How Dead & Company are doing this is a combination of arena and stadium shows, which are drawing larger and larger crowds each passing year. In fact, since forming in 2015, Dead & Company has sold more than 2 million tickets and grossed more than $200 million in tour revenue. Some could say that this is fueled by nostalgia, but the fact that the crowds seem to be getting larger speaks to a new generation of people falling in love with the music that Grateful Dead helped create. Finally this week, and I hate to say this, but radio is dying. This has been a rumor for a long time, especially since the rise of streaming services, but the writing appears to be on the wall. Two new reports have been released in recent weeks that lay out a grim reality for terrestrial radio. First, from Study Analytics, a report found that most consumers are unsure whether or not they even want radio in their car. Stereos are a completely different matter. Everyone wants to be able to connect their phones to their car, listen to the music or a podcast or whatever that they enjoy at their leisure. But radio, terrestrial radio specifically, where you're turning a knob and finding a station and listening to ads, people have no interest in that. And most of them would be fine to not even have it in their car at all. The second report, which comes from New York University, points part of the blame for radio's death at Generation Z, which is anyone born after the year 1995. According to the report, radio has failed to engage Generation Z because by the time they were old enough to be consuming music and aware of their favorite artists and pursuing new music, they were doing so on the internet. The idea of listening to the radio and hearing ads for things that they may or may not be interested in, it seems antiquated to them. And by 2020, 40% of everybody on the road will be Generation Z, and not long after that, the generation after them will follow, and they are even more disconnected from radio than Generation Z. That same report from New York University shovels even more dirt onto the grave of radio by adding that it is no longer the number one source of discovery for new music. That's the title that radio has had for a long time, but according to the report, people ages 12 to 24 now claim that YouTube, Spotify, and Pandora are the primary ways that they discover new music. Now, I always try to be optimistic about things in the music industry, but I do fear that we're reaching the end of radio's lifespan. Not only has radio failed to connect with younger generations, but it's filled with all these pesky advertisements that people just don't want to hear. 
In 2019, if you want to get rid of ads, you can usually do so for a few bucks, which removes the need to actually sit there and listen to them on things like radio. You can just go to Spotify, Apple Music, or even YouTube and just watch or hear the songs that you want to hear. Because of this, and because of the fact that radio has been very slow to adapt to how fast listeners' tastes are changing, it doesn't seem likely that the format is going to survive in the years ahead. There will always be people who want to hear radio, and it will always serve as a great anchor for communities, but unless radio can find a way to limit its advertising, which seems next to impossible, and increase the amount of new songs that it's putting into rotation, supporting and developing new acts along the way, I think radio is going to go the way of the buffalo, and honestly, I don't think many people are going to miss it. Now real quick, please click the subscribe button down below. We are creating a ton of video content these days and I want you to be a part of this community we're building. I've run out of time for stories this week, but we'll be back next week with new stories, new educational videos, and new podcast conversations. So please, click that subscribe button down below. I also want to ask that you check out our sponsor. Holix is the music industry standard for digital promotion online. It's trusted by everyone from Chance the Rapper to Slipknot, Metallica, and even Blink-182. You can join the ranks of artists who trust Holix by going to holix.com. The address is right here at the bottom of the screen. Go there, sign up today, and your first month of service is free. And if you're not an artist or if you don't know anyone in the music industry, you're just here to see the headlines, we thank you for watching. And until next time, take care of yourself. You deserve it.